All right, so we have a new PUBG update. This is number 6.2, and the patch notes were recently released. Every time PUBG does this, I like to go ahead and record a video talking about the update, going over all the details, sharing some of my personal opinion at the end. In this case, I was able to try the new game mode TDM, uh, so I definitely have some feedback on that, and also go over the release dates because I get a lot of questions about that on my YouTube channel. And remember, if you guys want to chat outside of YouTube, you can join our Discord, or you can also follow me anywhere on social media, Twitter, Instagram, at Blitz5. So so I should say first and foremost that as I record today's video, it is February 13th, 2020, and this update is going live to PC uh, next week on February 18th, 19th, depending on what time zone you're in. Again, that's PC only, and then there hasn't been an official announcement yet that I've seen for console, uh, but recently PUBG has been following a one-week release cycle um, after PC, so we will most likely see this on Xbox and PlayStation 4 the following week on February 25th or 26th, and if it takes two weeks or there's some kind of delay then we might not see this until the first week of March. I'm just going to hope that this comes at the end of February because I'm very excited to try this out and test it. Hopefully, you know, they did the test server with PC, which is happening right now. So they'll probably do it with uh, console as well. So first and foremost, let's get right into the uh, team deathmatch. That's what they brought up first. So we'll get into it first as well. So I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. It's TDM in PUBG. So I'm just going to go over the main details here. It's 8v8 FPP only, which is really interesting interesting weapon spawn kits which is very cool this has been something that's been on pc for quite some time now i always thought this was really cool you can spawn in with an m4 akm dbs vector uh, k9 slr mini 14 you get a secondary and a throwable it seemed like most of the throwables were all frags i'd like to see that maybe be a little bit different because there was no smoke grenades or not a lot of cover and then there's different areas of the first four maps so erangal miramar sanak and bakendi sort of like war mode if you ever played that where a certain area of the map like peshkova on the Kendi has been cut out and you're playing in that small section. I will say that I only played three different zones and the military base one in Erangel was absolutely terrible to me. It was the uh, down plane section of the military base, like the south side. There wasn't a lot of cover and I felt like I was just playing some sweaty game of PUBG where everybody was just camping in the back sniping. And to me, when I think of uh, first person, you know, I want run and gun gameplay. Uh, but overall, I did enjoy it. And I guess I should be saving this to the end. Let's keep going to the patch notes and I'll share all my feedback at the end. Uh, but overall, pretty solid. Love this addition to the game. I think it's a great idea. This is where we get into some really interesting changes. I was not expecting to see uh, grenade changes, especially the frag grenade changes in update 6.2 coming so soon. Uh, so this is pretty crazy. Let's just talk about it. So frag grenades, vests now mitigate damage received from frag grenades, but vest durability isn't reduced when taking damage from frags. The damage mitigation is now dependent on the level of vest worn by the player with the same reduction percentage as the bullet damage. So what does that mean in layman's terms? Well, now the better vest you have, the better protected you will be from frag grenades. Wacky Jackie posted that if you're wearing a level three vest now, there will be a 35% reduction in damage if you were wearing, a, as opposed to if you were wearing a level one vest. So you get 35% more protection wearing that level three. Uh, the information here also says that frags will deal 20% less damage to prone players. I was trying to figure out why this was the case. If you guys have a good idea as to why, leave a comment down below. Item weight increased by 50%, so now each frag grenade now takes up 27 inventory space as opposed to 18 or the capacity space. And now pulling the pin of a frag is now louder and more audible from further away. So let's break that down. So first and foremost, a couple different ways they could attack the frag grenade being overpowered. I think a lot of people online, including myself, like the idea of maybe capping the grenades to your bag uh, style. So if you have a level one bag, maybe cap that one grenade to two grenades, level three at three grenades, or some kind of cap system. This is what they have in Call of Duty and Battlefield where you really can't hold more than two grenades. Um, and Or something with the rarity of the frags. The other day, I was in a Miramar match, and I had seven or eight frags, and I ended up winning, and I killed... Uh, a handful of people in like the final circle, all with frag grenades, and it was totally overpowered. Uh, but I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I ended up getting the chicken dinner, but I shouldn't have been able to have seven or eight frag grenades at the end of that match, or it should have been a really rare occurrence. And it really isn't if you're playing on Miramar. There's a lot of frags on that map. So I feel like that should be maybe the first uh, angle of approach here. I really do like that they increase the inventory space. That's basically similar to adding a cap that it just is a lot heavier and you're really going to sacrifice other stuff in, in your bag. And it kind of sticks to the realism of PUBG and bag management, inventory management. I'm a little hesitant about this uh, 
damage reduction? Like, is it going to take out somebody, say that some, somebody with level three helmet, level three gear camping in a window? If you hit a nice nade on them, is it going to take them out? I don't know what that 35% uh, damage reduction is going to mean. What is the, you know, total grenade damage at that distance? One meter, two meters, three meters, four meters, five meters. Uh, so definitely interested to see player feedback from the test server and when this goes live to grenades. I think overall, this is a good change though. I'm just being kind of uh, a little nitpicky here with the details. Then we have some changes to smoke stuns and Molotovs. Very interesting. The smoke grenade, just a small change here. They decreased the fuse timer from three seconds to one second. So what does this mean? Uh, back in the day, I made a video breaking down all of the grenades, which I guess I'll have to redo now. Um, after you throw the smoke, right, you throws, it bounces. After a couple seconds, three seconds, the smoke starts coming out and it takes about seven to 10 seconds for the smoke to fill up and really provide you with enough cover to go for a really safe revive or maybe cross an alleyway. So now the fuse timer is gonna just be one second so that smoke will start filling up the air. And now that's only gonna take anywhere from like maybe five to seven seconds for the smoke to fill up the area for you to go to the revive. So it just gives you, uh, you know, kind of faster time for the smoke to be effective, which is great. Small chains, but just beneficial. Stun grenades now, it seems like they're just trying to make these more useful, so they've increased the hit radius, the effect radius by one meter. The ringing sound now impacts players through walls, and it also shakes cameras if the explosion is near the player. So just more of like an aftershock when you get hit with a stun grenade or it's nearby. And they've also increased the, uh, the stun explosion after impact to 0.7 seconds and now if you are not cooking the stun it has a longer fuse time of five seconds so it seems like what they're trying to do here is make it where you can throw the stun maybe a little farther but once it bounces it blows up so it doesn't bounce past the enemy which happens most of the time right it will kind of bounce past the enemy and then they don't get stunned and it doesn't really do anything seems like they're trying to uh, affect that and make it a little bit more beneficial and then here is a big change to the molotov cocktail so i think everybody loves throwing a molotov but Let's face it, they're just not that efficient in the current meta. And if you have a frag grenade, you're going to take the frag over the Molotov. It's just more reliable. You can bounce it off uh, windows, and it's easier to get behind a tree. So what they're doing to balance this out, create improvements here, is they're increasing the speed at which the fire spreads by 50%. The fire can now spread around objects. So say you throw it at the front of a tree, it, it now has a chance to spread behind the tree, uh, which is great because that would kind of make sense, right? That there's a likelihood the fire will go that way and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so we can actually take out the enemies there. And then sometimes the fire would just go left or right or just one direction. So now they've made it, it sounds like where it will go in all directions or would be better at going forward and backwards to just impact a better area and now for if a player is standing in the fire it will do an additional 10 damage i saw recently someone got hit by a molotov i was watching i was spectating them and they were just healing up in the molotov and nothing happened to them so now it seems like if you're in that situation and you don't move from out of the fire you will most likely die which is great because sometimes the molotovs just don't feel that uh strong um and useful again so I, I like that change and then also they've increased the or changed or improved the visual effects for the frag and stun grenade here's an image or video of the improved uh, frag grenade explosion i did this in the tdm mode when i played this morning and then this is a little bit controversial here so i'm trying to think how i want to go over this um, this is right peaking and leaning so if you're not aware when you play PUBG or really any shooter depending on how realistic it is when you peak right if the game has a peak option and in real life this is the case as well it is going to be harder to see you when you're peeking right as opposed to peeking left just based off the way that you're holding the weapon most people are holding it on their right side in PUBG, everybody's holding the weapon on their right side so you can stay more compact right if you were to stand behind a tree in real life and peek to the right um i see this in when i used to play paintball a lot is that really your right hand is showing your knuckles your uh, arm your forearm your elbow and really just like maybe a tip of your shoulder and the side of your head leaning to the right but if you have to lean to the left now your whole arm and a little bit portion of your body sticking out that more of your head is sticking out to the left so you can see around that tree because of the way that you have to hold the weapon so it's just going to make sense that peeking to the right has an advantage but wacky jackie posted a video sort of exposing or highlighting that at a certain point you could be peeking right and an enemy can't see you at all but you can see the enemy and actually shoot them but on the enemy screen all they see is a tree. They do not see any uh, portion of the person's body. So obviously that's like a visual issue there and they're working on fixing that, but they just want to let everybody know that there's always going to be an advantage to peaking that way. In my personal opinion about this, I don't know if you know I'm really an expert enough to share this, but 
really when you're playing PUBG, you're peeking and you're moving so much. You're moving left, you're moving right. You're kind of constantly moving around, right? If you stop moving, you're really prone to getting headshot and the enemy players are always moving as well. That I don't know how much this was obvious, how much this was abused in game actually in abused because i was testing it out and you really need to be within like a couple centimeter margin in the game and if you move too far to the left the tree's blocking if you move too far to the right the enemy sees you so i don't know how much this is really affecting people in the game and i think it was more of just like a kind of small visual glitch that was being pointed out then we have these awesome uh, Karakin changes. Love this. I think you guys are going to be excited about this. And it's like PUBG was listening to my feedback. I'm just kidding around. I can't take credit for it, but this is exactly how I felt. I'm glad they went with this. Um, so first, what you guys will probably be excited about is that the G36C and the MP5K have now been added to Karakin. Let's go clap all around uh, now that Vikendi is on vacation which I thought was a funny way that PUBG put it uh, you can't play with these weapons so adding them to, to uh, Karakin is a great idea also when I was running around Karakin kept picking up the scar there's so many scars on that map I'm like this could easily be the G36C just switch it up and give this place a home some people are a little worried that the MP5K is going to be a little OP on this map I personally don't think that gun's OP it is great at just shooting at multiple ranges up close mid range it's steady it's strong but I still think if you turn a corner with an Uzi or a vector and the other person has an MP5 that that vector is going to win out easily just the fire rate is so much faster uh, but I guess we'll see how it shapes out on on, um, on Karkin. I didn't see if they got rid of the Uzi or Vector. It didn't seem like they did. So now there's going to be three 9mm weapons on that map, which is kind of interesting. And they're also walking back some changes here to the sniper rifles and DMRs in the map. So when Karkin went live, they added meds and they added scopes and DMRs and snipers. And now, in my opinion, I just feel like there's too many snipers, too many people with three and four times scopes, uh, which makes the map a little bit frustrating because it's so easy to see people on top of the mountains and before without the scopes and snipers you had to really kind of think about whether you're going to take that shot whether you could hit them with a red dot or two times and it just made the map feel really interesting it made the winchester feel like uh it really had a place to shine and now that they added all this stuff it just kind of got crazy again so i like to see that they're dropping or reducing the amount of sniper rifles dmrs but they're also reducing the winchester and they didn't say anything about the scope so we interested to see how this uh, shapes the map again but i'm happy they're increasing the meds because it's crazy how much fighting there is on this map and the lack of meds makes it really difficult to get back to even 75% health let alone 100% health there's so many matches where I never get back to 100% health because I can't find any boosters at all so I feel like they definitely need some love in that direction and it's getting some more which I think is great and also kudos to PUBG for making quick adjustments to the map this is already the second one since it's been put on the test server then we have an adjustment to the blue zone. You can see the image here. There is the before and after. So the before, there's some visual distortion. There's like the uh, lightning in the blue or whatever you want to call that. And on the right, no visual distortion. And it looks like that effect is gone now. Something that I thought was interesting here, if you guys watch the TDM multiplayer trailer, is that in the trailer, you know, they're, they're picking what they're, they're putting into this trailer and I feel like it's done pretty purposely. They show a person going into the blue to flank an enemy team and take out two guys, right? So when I watch this, I'm like, man, I think they're kind of encouraging people here. They're sort of sending a message that they want part of your strategy to be uh, flanking and going into the blue risk reward of taking some damage, but to be able to flank on an enemy player. And then when I see this update, coming into the game in 6.2, I really feel like that may be kind of like a hidden narrative that they want people to explore this strategy. But it's interesting because a lot of player feedback is that they hate when people are in the blue. I call them blue demons, people hiding in the blue for so long and uh, not being able to see in the blue, but you can kind of see out of the blue. So now it seems like instead of making the blue just super distorted where you can't see in or out, they're actually going the other way, making it where you can perfectly see in or out of the blue zone. So definitely be prepared to see more people using this strategy. I've been doing it more recently and it does work. It catches people off guard, um, but just an interesting kind of thought or theory, right? Something I had, I'm not saying that I'm right. Uh, just a theory that, I was thinking about and then also they added a light humming noise to the blue zone so you can hear when it's close by you don't have to keep turning around and seeing how exactly close you are to it within 10 to 15 meters you'll be able to hear it which is nice especially if you're playing in uh, first person and then at the bottom of the blue zone it's brighter now you can, so you can see exactly where it ends and have more of an idea if you're going to make it into the circle or die jumping right at the edge and then spectating the next closest player then we have some improvements to the blood PUBG's been going back and forth with the blood then this is a really interesting feature. This is a parachute follow feature. 
Again, I don't think anybody needed this or requires this, but it's just a nice quality of life buff, especially for people who are going to the bathroom in your party or never jump with you. So now uh, if you're playing with some new friends on PUBG, you can say, hey, just follow me. And then when you jump, they will jump and follow you to the destination. I think this is great to keep parties together if, if, if possible. And just a nice feature that you can use and you can hold uh, F or B on console to cancel out of it and go your own direction. Sort of uh, Apex Legends has this and it's default, but you can cancel out of it. And and uh, I think this is a great feature. Very excited to see this. Hopefully it comes to console. Then we have the next iteration of PUBG Labs. I'm not going to go through this. I made a whole video talking about the first iteration of PUBG Labs. This is a skill-based rating, not skill-based matchmaking, but a skill-based ratings test. This is sort of its beta test. The previous one was alpha. We'll definitely be making a video about this in the future, but excited to see this come back. I'm very excited. I uh, love this coming into the game. Then we have some UI fixes. This is for PC with the friends list, um, some performance updates. Updates, custom maps, observer mode. Uh, some new skins. So the left skin was already on console. Then we have the right skin, which is the Badlands Leisure set with four items. Pretty cool. And then they've made an improvement to the parachute backpack. You can tell the one on the right definitely looks to be a little bit more clear and enhanced uh, visual fidelity. Then we have the second track of the Survivor Pass missions have been unlocked with six new Karakin exclusive missions. So new stuff to do. Very nice. And they're also making the weapon uh, mastery a little bit easier to obtain which i was surprised by because it's kept at 100 and a lot of people have already hit 100 so i don't know why it would be easier if anything i'd like to see it be harder or have more levels and unfortunately due to a technical issue the pubg id feature has been temporarily disabled but again for me i'm probably in the minority here but i already capped this out at 500 and there's no other levels um so for me no big deal but other people might be a little bummed by that and then of course always adding in some bug fixes here at the end um so like i said in the beginning of the video i just want to share some my personal opinions on this first i'll start with the uh, frag grenade i was kind of hinting on it in the beginning of the video that i'm just a little concerned about the frag grenade losing power and becoming um a little too weak you know i don't know i'd like to see the rarity thing be be tested first but again we'll see how it ends up playing out in the game um you know maybe i'm a little hesitant because i just use them so much but i will say that playing on karakin has been nice without the frag grenades and I've, I've done plenty well on that map without them um but overall i think this is a great idea i think you guys a lot of people have been asking for this um and this is a great step in the right direction and but what's interesting here is that um Part of the thing, so the vest is now going to block damage, but it still doesn't damage your vest. So you might have noticed in the past that if you get hit with a frag grenade and you have a two vest on, and you say you lose half your health, your vest doesn't take any damage. So they've kept that the same, even though they're having the vest mitigate some of that damage now. So I think if they're going to do that, I'd like to see the grenade maybe damage the vest a little bit. But again, I think I'm nitpicking a little bit on those changes. And lastly here, I just wanted to quickly recap the TDM experience I had playing this morning and talk about my opinion about it coming into the game. I think it's a great addition into the game. Some people were kind of negative about it, or didn't think it should be in PUBG and they should just stick to regular Battle Royale. But up to a certain point, I think more options are better. And we've seen this be successful on PUBG Mobile. So why not bring it to Xbox and PC and PlayStation 4? I think it's a great idea. And with only 16 total players, I don't think it's really going to hurt the player base or matchmaking times too much. And if it does, you know, PUBG could always take it out of the game. Uh, they did this with war mode. They, do, they used to do the weekend war modes on console. And then they eventually said, like, you know, we're not doing that anymore. And there already was war mode in the game. So it's so similar to TDM. They just kind of refined it and made it more tdm like for lack of a better uh, phrase or explanation there so i think this is great very excited to play this on xbox um, i will just say that uh, the experience was a little hit or miss i only played three of the maps uh, but the one on the military base i did not enjoy at all i think i might have mentioned that in the beginning of the video there just was like no cover didn't feel like i could move around i was really craving that to like warm up and experience the uh, first person shooter atmosphere of PUBG. The other maps were a little bit better because they were urban with more buildings like in Peshkova. So I feel like I'd like to see just the all the urban maps being played with more buildings and more cover to run around, especially because it doesn't really matter if you die, you just respawn. Uh, so a lot of the urban warfare would be really cool. And uh, very interesting to me that they won with FPP only. I wonder if they just chose this because it works better for this game mode or if they're trying to expose more players to FPP. It's the age-old question for PUBG that they split the pe player base into TPP and FPP 
creates debates and arguments and diminishes the matchmaking times because there's it's split into two different uh, playlists. Uh, so I wonder if they're trying to you know lean us that way or if this was just a quick decision being like, hey, it works better in FPP, so let's do it that way. Uh, I like uh, speculating and theorizing on that stuff because it's a pretty big business decision for PUBG and how they will do this uh, moving forward. You know, the competitive scenes, FPP, more casual players do TPP. So we'll see what the future holds for PUBG. And from my experience playing on the PC, I didn't get any lag, but it'll definitely be interesting to see how this game mode uh, TDM plays on console. So as always, if you made it this far, thank you all for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, you can feel free to leave a dislike and let me know why down in the comments below. I check them all. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. I'm Blitz5 and peace out.